Diesel had been punished. He had lied to Fergus about being sent to the smelters for work, and it nearly cost the traction engine to be scrapped. The Fat Controller was not happy. It seems to me that I do not understand why it seems to be such a problem that you cannot communicate with others properly, Diesel, let alone follow simple orders. I do not appreciate it when Lars are told to my engines, especially when they are destined to be useful. These engines have a life on this island, and if you cannot bring any sense of good behavior, I will have you sent away from here permanently. Do I make myself clear? Yes. Yes. What, Diesel? Yes, sir. With meaning, yes, sir. Now, you will be shunted up near the big station until I can trust you again. And if that time comes, I will see that you can stay. There were seldom engines that liked these. His nasty behavior would leave a lasting impression upon everything he touched. Every engine he passed glared right through his radio. Those who had heard about his recent act took offense for Ferguson's sake. They knew how kind he was and how efficiently he worked. And they also knew that Diesel was not one to learn his lesson easily. But despite his cynical and malicious behavior and his devious deeds, he got along quite well with his driver. The two would even go so far as to have meaningful conversations together. And secretly, he was the only one he could trust. Not even the Fat Controller could help Diesel the way his driver did. One day, Diesel was sitting in a siding near the big station for a rest. His driver had just gone off to town for some lunch. He had gotten himself some bagels and enjoyed his small meal. He had just stepped out of the bakery when he saw something across the street. It appeared to be a box. His curiosity got the better of him as he walked over to see what it contained. He looked inside and nearly fell back in surprise. Oh. My. Goodness. Diesel kept to the side, basking in the sun. His driver came back and he noticed that he had something in his hands. Or arms, rather. When he came closer, he could see that in his arms was a baby. Where on earth did you get that? I found uh, him across the road. Poor little talk was in a box. Well, put it back. It doesn't belong to you. His driver was horrified. We are dead, Diesel. I couldn't leave the poor boy. He would have... It... I just couldn't. I bet he's gagging for some milk. The baby then started to coo. He was looking up at Diesel, and his little eyes gleamed. His driver laughed. <laughs> I think he likes you, old boy. <clears throat> Diesel wasn't impressed, but secretly, he had a warm feeling in his boiler. While he was working around the yard, Diesel could hear the baby giggling in his cap. His driver was tickling and playing with him. Diesel just couldn't understand it. The only character that little gremlin has is that he soils himself. He doesn't even know what anything around him is. How fun is that? But he said this to himself. Diesel was on his last job of the day. He had taken his train to Edwards Station and his driver drove him to the siding. He was going to the bathroom with the baby, but he decided to talk to Diesel first. I'll have to take this one in and clean his nappies. Right. Uh, you know, Diesel, my wife and I, uh, we've been trying to have a child. Oh, so you and the missus have been doing some work. Mm. 
Well, yeah. Uh, we've been trying, but the thing is, uh, is I uh, happen to be infertile. Diesel was surprised. Huh. I'm expecting more from you, driver. I thought you'd be more capable. Well, perhaps it's because I spend all day with you, don't I, you rusty old thing? The driver walked away with his comment, of course, meant in jest. But Diesel took offense. He then got an idea and was about to make a big mistake towards his and his driver's relationship. His driver came back with the infant, ready to set off for home. It was now or never. So I'm the reason you can't have a child, is that it? And he roared his engine into life. The baby wailed in a start. Diesel could only cackle. He meant this in jest too, but looked to see his driver's stone cold face. Diesel only rolled his eyes as the driver gently shushed the baby to calm him down. Diesel's engine started and he set off for the ships. His driver stepped down from the cab. The baby was asleep now in his arms. He walked to his car when Diesel spoke to him in his oily voice. I hope you and the missus enjoy him now. Diesel's driver stopped and he swung round. He declared in a firm voice while not shouting so as to not wake the baby. Diesel, listen to me and listen very carefully. He may have a strike and a strut every now and then, and not understand the world around him. But that does not mean that he should rot away in some box somewhere. He's a pure and innocent little boy, and seeing as you can't see how others take that, or anything for that matter, I'm not surprised how much trust others have for you, or how the fat controller even has the sense to keep you. I'll see you tomorrow. He walked away, leaving Diesel baffled. His driver, the one person he trusted, gave him bitterness. Later on, the other engines were talking about Diesel and his mischief. <gasps> For an engine whose devious behavior is more convincing than his actual behavior, James declared. It really is persistent about making the fat controller have him stay. How he actually convinces him to stay is beyond my smoke box, put in Gordon. Even deceiving an engine the first time should have been enough for him to be sent away, spoke Henry. But five more times? I fancy that. And he had thought his punishment on sending Duck to Wellsworth was cruel, said Douglas. Bear cut in. But surely there's something redeemed about him. Why else do you think he's been continually brought back? Ugh, any explanation be as good as the other in the case of that old tea kill, rebutted Donald. An engine like him only deserves to be another shunt like the under is before him. Just destined to be passed over in the yard somewhere, said James. Almost all the engines agreed. Diesel sat in the shed listening to it all. He was too ashamed and out of view to argue. He felt awful. He could truly see the consequences now of his actions. In his sleep, however, he had a horrible dream. The next day, he awoke to see someone coming up to start his day off. It was his driver, and only 
his driver. Where's the little tyke? Oh, I thought he would get in the way of your work. After all, you are the reason I had to have him. No? Diesel said nothing. He was too ashamed. As he shunted his trucks, he couldn't help but relate to the feeling of abandonment. Being alone and forgotten was the engine's worst fear. He spent the whole day thinking about not only the baby, but his driver and his wife. He also thought about what the engines might think of him. He wanted to prove himself, but he didn't know how. When the day's work was done, he decided to ask his driver. It was now or never. Driver? Yes, Diesel? I know that I can often be despicable. Well, I'll admit it. You're actually almost always despicable. Right, but I want you to know that I really trust you and that I don't want what I said yesterday to divide us. I'm sorry for being so miserable. Diesel, in all my years of driving you, I don't think I've ever met a more cynical spirit. But that may have just been the most affecting thing you've said to me. And if it really means that much to you, I will see if the messes can allow me to bring the little tyke. I take it she was more than cross with me. <laughs> oh, Diesel, she even wonders how I convinced myself to leave home in the morning. I thought and struck Diesel. Why do you then? Diesel, if you have the capabilities of being the nastiest engine on the railway, then surely you have the same capabilities to redeem yourself. I'll see you tomorrow. Diesel had never thought of it like that. And that statement clung to Diesel for a long time. The next day, Diesel was waiting anxiously for his driver. He had woken up early and was nervous to see if his driver had kept his promise. Soon enough, he could see his driver walking up to him, and in his arms was the baby. He was beginning to doubt himself. Perhaps this wasn't a good idea. Well, there he is. The baby's innocent face made Diesel all the more worried. He began trembling just at the idea of making the mistake of losing more trust. His driver could see this. Calm down, boy. Just be yourself. He won't talk back, but he knows what you're saying. But... Uh, uh. Diesel was nervous, but his driver helped him. He told stories about his adventures on the mainland and how he stood up to nasty diesels. Even nastier than he was. But despite his greasiness, he felt more than pure with the pure child in front of him. Over the next few days, Diesel's work and attitude improved. His driver would help him, and he'd bear the patience to listen. The other engines were almost suspicious seeing Diesel in such a state. But Diesel was confident now that he could be trusted, and ought to show the fat controller how useful he was. But I shouldn't say any more, or I shall spoil another story.